What's going on guys, it is Curve and I'm bringing you that in-depth level five Hollowed Sepulcher guide um, with a lot of awesome practice and tips from my buddy Iron Zerg. I have found out some pretty cool tips and routes for you guys to make the Hollowed Sepulcher easy mode. One more thing, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe as well as leave your RSN in a comment below as I will be giving away a bond on my next video. So go ahead and do that and let's continue. So for the next part of the guide, I wanted to point out a couple of plugins that you guys can utilize in order to assist you with this guide as I'll be referring to. First, I would recommend ground markers. Now what this does is it allows you to press shift and mark a tile. This will assist you in the runs as I have marked multiple paths for you through to make this guide as easy as possible. So you can click them and unclick them. Also click remember color per tile so that way once you change the color, I'm going to show you how to change this color. So when you select a color here and then close it out, now you can select a new color and mark a new tile. So as long as you remember color per tile, you can change colors. Make sure you close out that window. If you try to change colors here and it shows, it will still use the old color. So make sure you close this out and it'll use the new color. As long as you go ahead and have this on, it will assist you. You don't want to draw the tiles on the mini map or it'll be ugly. But tile markers are definitely helpful under the ground markers plugin. Um, we can go ahead and remove those after, but another thing you want to utilize is actually called tile indicators. And what this is, is this will actually show where you're running or where your mouse is hovered over. So uh, color of current destination, what that means is when I click over here, it'll show the tile that I'm running to. So we don't necessarily need to show the true tile. What the true tile means is it shows the tile your character is actually on. So as you can see the path my character is running, that's not necessarily important here, so we can take that off. However, we want to definitely highlight the hover tile, which you can see where my mouse is, and the destination tile. So what this will do is it'll assist you with accuracy, and this will come into effect later on that we will need in order to be more efficient. Now, once that square disappears, as you see, it disappears before I actually get there, that's when the game thinks I'm there. So if we were to run here and then run back, the game thinks I did run to that tile even though I never stepped on it, okay? So that's something else that's definitely helpful. Uh, I'm not sure if they actually put this in Rune Light, but if you go down to the bottom and click Plugin Hub and type in Sepulcher, there will actually be something that you can add that will mark the arrows in the hollowed Sepulcher. So that's something that is also uh, very helpful as well as marking the swords. So, now that we have those plugins, let's go ahead and move on with the guide. So now that you have the appropriate plugins inside your RuneLite client, let's actually show you what you're going to need to use them for. So the way movement works in this game is when you click and you're running, you're actually moving every other tile. So let me explain what this means. Let's say that I'm clicking from here to here. The game will actually only read that I'm on this tile and this tile. If I turned on the true tile indicator, it will show that my character is actually running every other tile, which you can see that there. This is how we are going to abuse dodging portals and lightning. As long as you are running from the square before the portal or the lightning, your character will not actually step on them and not be harmed by them. So this is a crucial tip in regards to running through the sepulcher and basically ignoring the portals as well as ignoring the lightning. So keep in mind, we don't need the true tile on. You can use it if you'd like, but for this demonstration purpose and guide, I personally do not use it. All right, so now I wanna dive into the gear up Grades that have been kind of debunked since the Hollowed Sepulcher came out and any notable things that you might need. First, I wanna go into the buy order of the items. You'll wanna get the ring, the grapple, the focus, the hammer, and then the necklace. And then you can go for the dies or the acorn. If you really just wanna go for the dies, you're more than welcome to, but I do find that the other items make this a much more enjoyable process. So that's the buy order going into this. Now here are the notable upgrades. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to wear all of the items that I've mentioned in my previous guide, as well as the upgrades if you can. This is how I like to have my inventory set up. I have my planks with my appropriate nails. I have my vampire dust ready for when I have to loot those floors. 
I just put a coin stack in my mark stack, two stamina potions. I never find myself using more than two doses per run. So definitely I just bring two just to make sure I have the space available for them. A lock pick. So the strange old lock pick has been confirmed by mods to actually help you with looting a little better than a normal lock pick. So you might as well just sit that in the inventory. This is a notable upgrade, the prayer book. You actually get this from the end of the Great Brain Robbery quest, and you're actually gonna receive that if you run on over to the monastery here, um, east of Ice Mountain and west of Edgeville. There's a little bookcase right here. If you actually search this bookcase right here, essentially what you'll do is you'll get this book, and instead of using an antidote, you can recite a prayer. It'll use one prayer point, and it will cure your poison. So you'll only need this. You don't need any more antidotes and waste your money on those. The saw, like I mentioned, I don't believe the crystal saw helps at all. Um, the hollowed hammer, obviously upgraded from a regular hammer. I bring the Explorer's Ring for Alks, for Rune Plate Bodies, Rune 2Hs, any Plate Bodies, really just to make sure that I get the most out of my Stams, and I don't have to spend my time at those Obelisks at the end of the floors. And I've also downgraded to the level 6 Enchant um, for uh, Enchanting Onyx Jewelry. The reason being is because when you use the level 7 Enchant for the Zenite Jewelry, it's actually very expensive. It's about a little over 10k GP per portal enchant using this spell. So we're actually gonna roll into the Onyx once we get the focus because it doesn't have that much less of a success rate and it's way cheaper. As you can see, the earths and the fires in the cosmic as opposed to 20 bloods and 20 souls, that'll save you about 20K per run and that'll help you with your profits as well. So that's the new gear setup that I would recommend bringing. This is what I bring with me every time I go for a run. Another quick tip that I would recommend you guys do is try to do this on a unpopulated world. The reason being is because each floor is an instanced floor. So for example, if I were to go down into this floor and there was already a player here, the traps would be offset. And what that means is it wouldn't be a clear floor or a fresh floor. So as I click over here, you know, this might be, let's say it was a sword trap, right? If it was a sword trap, it would give me maybe a scuffed rotation. So you always wanna start out with a fresh floor Floor. Um, so it's best, unless you're racing your friends, which makes time go by much faster, to do the Hollowed Sepulchre on an empty world so you can make sure that you're making the best and most efficient times, which will help your marks per hour, as well as your XP and GP per hour. So definitely recommend doing this on an empty world if you can. I just wanted to throw a quick update on this floor here. Essentially, they've added another rotation in the update as well as making the arrows more visible. If you take a look here, I have two tiles marked. The first one was from the first guide where we would typically uh, be able to go right now and get through. But there's actually another rotation that they put in, which I'll show you when the sword actually comes back and passes you, you can step back on that purple tile um, or one ahead of it, which I've marked here. That way you don't have to wait the full rotation to go around. And then once it goes down, you can run all the way through. So that's another notable path that will make your runs a little more efficient. So another quick tip when running from this trap on the end of floor four, you kind of want to click right before that yellow portal and then on the blue portal to make sure that you don't actually lose there um, and get hit by the yellow one. So here, here's a little tip for saving a couple of ticks. If you click where you're walking and then pass through, typically you save a tick if you do it properly, but you can't do it too fast. So for example, if I click here and my character moves there and then the tile goes away, I automatically phase through that door. And you can do that here as well. You see the tile marker disappear and then you click and you get through that much faster than when your character would normally walk up and wait. So that's a pretty good tip there for you. A couple of things I want you guys to mark is this center piece on the end of floor four, right before the stairs, and this tile right here. It's right above the center, this three by three area of this statue of the Justiciar. It's gonna be right there between the corner of the wall and the top there. And the reason being is because when we go down, if you spam click this square, it will actually take you into the perfect position on this floor to do one of the three options. So let's get into floor five. All right, so as you can see here, we're on that spot that I've marked that we're running over from on floor four. I'm gonna go ahead and teach you guys with these tile markers, the three routes that you can go through this. So if you ever see these markers, the purple, I would say is the easiest one to learn. Then I would recommend the white, then I would recommend the blue. On this specific trap, the purple will always let you go through. It's the safest. However, the white and the blue are trickier. So I'll show you how to do that. 
For the purple one, you're gonna wanna stand here when it's safe. So let's say you come on in and these two are firing, you can stand on the purple one. Then you're gonna move forward to these and you can mark all these tiles as we go through. You'll move forward to these, la di da di da and then you'll make it to the end. So that is for the purple path. The white path is great because if you come running down and these are firing and this one right here is firing off, you're gonna wanna take the white path. Now this one's a little difficult because you're gonna have to be tick perfect. And what that means is you can run across four statues if you time it right. So you're gonna wanna count one, two, three, click, or two ticks, which means one, two, click. And if you do it properly as the flames are just about to close, you'll be safe after skipping those four statues. And that is the white path. Now the blue path is a combination of the purple and the white path. If these two are firing off, you're gonna wanna one, run right in and you're gonna take this path. And it's the same as the purple, the only difference is you use that trick we used on the white path right here. One, two, click, and you'll run all the way through to the end. Once again, skipping four statues. So once you get really good at the purple path, you can try out the white path. Once you get really good at the purple path, you can try out the blue path, depending. But as long as you're good on those ticks, you'll be perfect at getting through this trap every time with no problem. All right, for this trap, you do have three options as well. The first being, as soon as the sword is thrown, you wanna take the first trap, click the portal that's active. Then you're gonna to wanna to run to the last trap. And I'm hovering over to the left here because I knew I was taking that middle portal and my character would be sent right about here. So we wanna dodge this sword on its way back. So I'm just hovering using this tile indicator to click two to the side so that way I get here. And the second the sword swoops away, I can step back this way and not waste my time running around. So that's the first option. The next option you have is when the sword is coming back. We're gonna take this white and we're gonna click right in the center. The reason why we click in the center is because we never know which one is going to be firing off and it's easier to step to the side and we hover again to the left so we don't get hit by the sword and then the sword goes away and then we run. And the last option here is if the sword is up top and it's starting to swing back, you wanna be prepared in this blue area. And what that means is you can actually do a sword skip. So if this is coming down this way and you're in the middle of a rotation and you think you can make it to the center one, you're gonna to wanna to wait here for a pulse. That third one right there and we'll run. Now you just have to time that right, but you should be able to get through that trap with no issue. All right, so coming up on this trap, we're gonna go ahead and click right before it. Watch when this red square disappears. I'm gonna click the portal and conjure the portal before I even get there. Now here I'm gonna get poisoned while I'm spam clicking. You don't have to step to the side like I did here, but go ahead and just spam click and loot. Once you see the thieving XP drop, spam click, and when that red square disappears, click the portal and you'll go through really quickly. This next trap is relatively simple. Much like my guide, we're gonna to wanna to just focus on the arrows and brute force through. However, if you utilize the two-step method, we can skip these portals entirely, as well as trying to take advantage of some of the blue ones. Now, both portals will actually give you a moment of immunity, so we wanna abuse that as well, and kind of just brute force our way through. We know there's no portals here, and we'll just run around, just dodging. We can take the blue ones if we'd wish, but you can see there's no yellow ones we have to worry about here. Now, let's say we wanted to skip over a yellow portal, right? We wanna be the step before it, and then we wanna step over it. That way the game thinks we're actually running two tiles. Same thing here, we won't get hit with this blue one if we run over like that. But if we step into it, it will teleport us forward. Same thing with the yellow. If we step into it one square next to it, it will teleport us back. That is a very simple trap. All right, so running in from the third trap, I like to orient my screen like this. Go ahead and mark these tiles for me. There's a couple of white ones as well as a couple of purple ones. Now this one is very important. We'll get to that in a moment. If this one is firing, you're gonna take the white path. It's pretty simple. And then you're gonna click over here. And if you run up to this trap and these traps are firing on this rotation, you're gonna run in the purple. And then you are still gonna run to this white tile. And let me explain why. The reason why you run to this tile is if you can see when I click and it disappears that I mentioned at the beginning, the game thinks you're there. So what we're trying to do is utilize that two-step trick to avoid this entire trap. 
And the best way to do it is by ignoring it. So let's say we're, we're a step out, right? We're gonna step on every single one of these lightning bolts and get hit by one of them. The trick is to run from a tile beforehand. Now, what I did previously was click here. I would run up to it, stop, and then I would click through. But that could slow you down on this next trap. So what we're using is momentum. The reason why we click this tile here is so when we come swinging in and that color disappears, we can click the next safe spot and keep that momentum going throughout the trap. So as this one disappears, like I mentioned, you click here. Once you see the spot disappear, your character keeps zooming. Otherwise, it'll slow you down for this next trap. Now go ahead and mark these tiles here. We've got a purple phase going through the center on these tiles. You can pause and mark here if you'd like. And then there's a white tile markers up top here. Now what's important is when you come pulling up from this location, you can click one of these two safe spots, which one to go for. If both of these traps are firing at the beginning, you're going to want to go ahead and take the purple route. The purple route is pretty easy. You're just going to want to time your clicks. It's pretty forgiving, and then you can go all the way on through. Now the white one's a little harder. You want to make sure you use that trick that I taught you on the floor above us to do the one, two, three click, or the two tick click. When there's one showing, you're going to take the white path. Here you're going to have to use that trick and go one, two, three click, and make sure you get through without being hurt doing a four statue skip. And that is that entire trap. I would recommend prioritizing the purple one first. And then once you get comfortable with that two tick click, you can go ahead and take the white trap there. All right, so for this trap, you're gonna to wanna to mark these tiles that I have here. This is just gonna tell you which portal you wanna use. Once again, purple is relatively easy. White is a little harder. Um, and then the blue is the actual hardest one. So that's gonna involve a sword skip. So once it's thrown, you're gonna to wanna to click the activated tile, and then you're gonna to wanna to run through to this next one and run to the safe spot here. For the white skip, once this one comes back, you're gonna to wanna to click the activated portal, and then you're gonna run straight to the end or the second to last one and teleport forward and run. And lastly, for the sword skip, we're kind of going to do the same thing my man up there just did. We're going to wait for the sword on its way back. And you can utilize any blue tile, but for timing purposes, this one seems to work best for me. On the third pulse, I typically run through. And then I use this one just to get a little head start and run on through. All right, moving up to this, you just want to click the first grapple and your character should path. You want to do it from really far away. And on your way back, you want to loot and click the same grapple from that white square that I have marked. I didn't do it because I'm a Nimbus, but if you don't do it, you see how your character will walk down and sidestep. That's gonna waste you some time, so definitely go from the white mark. All right, so now that we're on this floor, the final floor, we're gonna wanna make sure we're gonna combine our movement with the lightning trick and the portals that I've taught you earlier in this guide. And we're basically just gonna brute forth, Bruce, bleh, Bruce, Bruce Valanche. We're gonna brute force this just like we did on the floor above, we're just gonna make sure we're stepping over the portals. Now for the lightning, you can move in between the lightning as long as you make sure that your character is one square before the lightning. So if we were here, right, we can move anywhere in between this lightning without getting hit. We can click all the way through, we can click to the side. We wanna make sure though, you're right before the lightning. So you're gonna to wanna to make a little V here and that's the safe spot. I don't really use tile markers for those because it's very straightforward as long as you know you're before you run through the lightning, you're on the right spot. But here we go. This is the big one. All right, so I'm going to show you the tile markers first and then I'm going to show you how we move on through this. So first, I want to show you that we have the white and the purple paths. You're going to have two options for all of these depending on what's going on. It's going to be the white here and the purple here. You're going to skip three, white, purple, and then that's the end of the trap. You're gonna to wanna to clear the trap after those. I've marked that little V shape there, so that way you know where to step for the lightning so you don't get hit by it. That's typically where you're gonna to wanna to click once you get through this trap. So I wanna show you how to get through this trap. If these north statues are firing, you're gonna take the purple route. If these south statues are firing, you're gonna take the white route. 
Now let me show you what that means. These north ones are firing, so we're gonna step in the purple, and then we're just gonna run, keeping an eye on there, making sure we're safe, and diagonaling through. And that's pretty much it. And now here we know we're safe if we wanna proceed. We can make sure we're just one right before the lightning, before we proceed. And you can pretty much just click here, making sure that you're safe. Now for these two wizard statues, they fire all of them or just one of them here. So what you can do is I would recommend you run here and get to these safe spots because then you can go ahead and mark all of these tiles that I've marked for you. Go ahead and pause here. Mark these tiles once you get to this point. We're going to reset this trap and I'm going to show you the rest of it. So I just showed you the purple option. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the white option. We're going to wait for this one to be shot. And we know we're safe in the middle, but we have to move away from that arrow. So we're going to step to the side. We know we're safe here, but we have to diagonal just to escape that. And that's the white option. Same thing here. We know we're one right before the lightning, so we're safe to click right through here. We want to prepare on this purple because that's the safe spot. Now we see that one fired off by itself so we can get to this safe spot. The rest of this is relatively the same. You just wanna pay attention to the arrow. I'll get back to that. But first, I wanna show you an expert trick if you're feeling pretty confident on floor five. For this first trap, you can actually one-click run through all five statues. And I know that sounds crazy, but the only thing you need to make sure is you have two of the exact same arrow patterns like that. One stipulation is that these north guys are firing, and I'll show you now. You're gonna to wanna to use that one, two, three. So here we're actually not gonna be able to do it because it's changed. So we're gonna to have to wait for the proper rotation. And it is rare and you'll rarely use this, but we wanna wait for this north one to fire and two arrows that are coming back to be the same. So we're just having a little bad RNG here. We're gonna wait for that. Here we go, two, three, click. Now, I could have messed that one up, but you see there, I made it all the way through. I panicked a little bit, but that was a first try to get through there. It is a very hard trick to utilize. However, if you're tight on time and you feel very confident in the sepulcher, you can go ahead and utilize that trick. I don't recommend it as it's very rare that it'll happen, but it is something to save you some time in the long run. Once you get to the halfway mark, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna complete the sepulcher. So once you're prepared and you've marked these tiles, you're gonna wanna mark the V for the lightning. And same thing as earlier, it's basically the same setup, but I've also marked the safe spot right after. That safe spot right there that's white is pretty much the same as this little V. However, we wanna make sure we readjust for these arrows to make sure we can get off to the end without being harmed. So we're gonna keep an eye on the arrows there. We're gonna step into our preparation lane and we're gonna step through. Make sure we step on the right V and we can kind of just diagonal here if you're looking to take your time or you can click through the entire thing. Once again, we have the purple ones firing here and the white ones firing here on the left. So we're gonna go ahead and now take this purple route, keep an eye on the arrows. Once those go down, we'll go here, but we need to move over middle, remember. If you ever panic like I am now, you can go ahead and take one step forward. That's how you know you're safe. Every single time they will alter alternate except for at the end here. So you wanna make sure that these last ones will always keep you safe because those will always fire. So please be careful there. Other than that, I'm gonna show you one quick run through of the entire trap so that way we can get you feeling a little more confident here in one nice clip. We're gonna go over here, and now we know we're taking the white route. We couldn't one-click that, remember, because it wasn't the north side. We're gonna run over here. We're making sure we're safe on our lightning tiles, and we're just zigzagging through, clicking all the way through here, focusing on just the arrows. We don't need to take a break because we're confident. We're gonna take the middle route here, and we see these coming, so we're gonna diagonal. Just making sure that we're safe. We're focusing here on the arrows, making sure we're on the safe white line. Can't get hit by anything here except for arrows, so we're focusing on those. We're gonna take the purple route, we're gonna step forward, and we're gonna readjust in the center. Remember, if we panic, we can take a step forward just because they alternate, but otherwise you should be able to run straight through to the end. 
Once again, I'm getting a little lucky here, but let's say we run to the end. You want to readjust one last time before you run through and complete your run at the Sepulcher. You can go ahead and loot this if you'd like, but other than that, that's how you want to get through that last trap of the Sepulcher. All right, guys, and that's it to floor five of the Hollowed Sepulcher. Thank you so much for watching my guide. Don't forget to leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe, so that way I can go ahead and bring more of these videos to you guys. Leave that RSN down below so I can give away a bond to one of you lucky subscribers. And go ahead and make sure your PMs are on. I'll be contacting... Contact, I, con bleh, I'll be contacting you in game chat, so make sure that your private is on so I can reach out to you and offer you a bond. Uh, I'll be showing that in the next video, but guys, if you have any questions, feel free to PM me. That's Curve, and good luck at the Hollow Sepulcher.